Thanks very much. Uh, very much enjoying the conference so far, except for a bit of rain this morning. But hey, that's okay. Uh, resolving code names to structures from the medicinal chemistry l literature, not as fair as it should be. Now, actually, I'll leave the leave you to read this online. I have a bit of a history of this. In about about ten years ago. Um, the combination of the MRC and NCATS and AstraZeneca released a tranche, about a couple of hundred, of compounds that were offering for repurposing proposals. The trouble is about half of those had code names that they were blinded. You couldn't tell what the structure was. So this was a great impediment on their evaluation. Okay, a few bits of some good news and bad news. If your code name has a full description in a journal, these represent the leading edge of global drug discovery output. They're tangible lead compounds that do something, many of them are target mapped. But, of course, you need explicit name to structure, which I've called CN to S, uh, to realize the value of these. How many are there in the wild? Anybody's guess, maybe, uh, maybe somewhere between 30 and 40,000 historically. Um, Unfortunately, many of published lead compounds actually uh, have these codeless locants in the paper, like uh, compound 22A. This is it's quite difficult. Although there's a, there's a sort of consensus with this three-letter uh, three prefix and five or six numbers is common, there are no guidelines for how you should ascribe a code name. So, and we get semantic confusion from multiple code names, I found it, you, you can find from mergers and acquisitions a string of at least three code names uh, from the historical takeovers that get renamed from the portfolio. Uh, some of them you may have three that are not changed. Okay? So, uh, and there's a certain amount of new small companies renaming old chestnuts compounds, but they give them new codes. Yeah? Just to, uh, just to bamboozle us. So, the Guide to Pharmacology curates uh, code names, but they're quite selective in which papers they will choose to, 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 uh, to curate. Uh, Binding DB and Kemble have a mirroring arrangement. Kemble will often curate the code names as well, but there is a long time lag. So these three sources eventually submit to PubChem and uh, so some other submissions. Uh, uh, vendors occasionally, but you're looking at a time lag of anywhere between two and eight months between the publication and the appearance of that code name to structure in PubChem. So, in terms of uh, synonym spaghetti, of course, the code names on a good day they'll eventually turn into INNs when they um, uh, a, a, a pre drug submission process or the use stands over the other side of the Atlantic. Trouble is, you, you get, along with the trade names as well, you get, we end up with synonym spaghetti, plus uh, uh, even more confounded by the u stands, which tend to be 45% of them are mixtures, the salts. Okay? So, as far as we know, there's no m focused harvesting efforts or in either public or commercial resources. So, this is, uh, you could call this, if you're uncharitable, you, you could call this a, uh, a dog's breakfast of names or naming anarchy on a good day, it's uh, eclectic. But you can, see, you can see some of the problems here. Uh, this was, uh, I sweated away through the 2000 most recent J Med Chem abstracts. Uh, I'm quite used to code names, so it's fairly quickly to recognize them in an abstract, maybe in a few moments. Um, but you can see there's, there's a rough consensus on this prefix plus a series of lettuce forms, but there are all sorts of weird things. If you look at that uh, one down the bottom left here, if you call your compound P18, you're almost wanting people not to find it. Yeah? And you get these horrendous ones of uh, uh, bracket prefixes and low, uh, mixed cases, and you get hyphens. Why people... Um, use the R and S prefixes occasionally when that should be encoded in the stereo and the smile string that they specify. So, um, as an example here, if you are quite a fan of uh, uh, the instant display, if you go to the NCBI all databases, 
you ping in a ping in a name or a synonym, you get a, a, a quick, rapid picture of how good or, or bad it is. Yeah, in terms of the matches. Here, you can see on the pubcam side there is no uh, there is no name to structure. Okay, so it, it doesn't hit anything yet. It's probably on the way in a few months. It'll come through, but. Uh, in this case, you see two. You see a PubMed, and because it's open access, you see a PubMed Central as well. Okay, so because uh, I'm used to used to Journal of Journal of MedChem, I can I can curate this 6096. Uh, it takes a while, maybe maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes, but it has the nuances that we we all love. If you look at Figure Five, where they call it 60906. They actually put that number on the chloride salt. And even the, uh, even the formate salt, they're recording a different bioactivity. Okay, it's completely experimentally plausible. And just on the left of that top box, you'll see the prescient move some years ago that from, uh, inspired by Michael Gilson from BindingDB that uh, gentleman, J. Med Chem, the author, will submit a supplementary CSV file with the... With the FASTA strings in it. May or may not have the code name up at the front, but they'll also have compound numbering. Now, in this case, of course, it's easy enough to just pop it straight into PubChem, and, um, uh, and you can see it actually has, it'll have three hits, parent plus those two salts. Okay? And nice thing about PubChem, it, it'll, many of these lead compounds that are published have been, already been extracted from, from patents. Okay, so they'll be in there, and you can map straight through to the patent. Uh, I've curated about 100 most recent JMED chems, and you can extract code names, uh, compound names, uh, map them straight into PubMed, you get genome and some patents and some other stuff. So it's, it's very, very useful. Uh, I'll have to skip this. This is our work on regexes, where we pulled out about 18,000 from five uh, leading medicinal chemistry journals. Fairness issues, long gnarly codes, short ones, they fall at the first findable hurdle. Most journals are behind firewalls, stuff's entombed in PDFs, so A doesn't work very well. For JMC, only about 12% of the code have code numbers, most uh, but most is specified by these locant in the paper. So it'd be better if more organisations actually had a code number system, even an internal chemical registration system, and that they could pre-submit to pump chem. So the SMILES files are uh, very valuable, but they're, they're difficult to machine read, and uh, you'll get formatting mangling from the plus minus sign doesn't come through to the Excel sheets. Uh, and if they're in other journals that don't include the SMILES strings, you need OPSIN to get your IUPAC translated, or uh, worst case, you'd need to, the image you have to translate by decima. So Markov's nest, nesting makes the SAR extraction very difficult. And the precision of target naming is very variable. We all know this. And a lot of the clinical ones are still blinded. You cannot get that name to structure. So our new MDC, Medicines Discovery Catapult Strategy, we've got to focus on drug discovery support for small, medium enterprises. So this project is feeding us with the latest curated MedChem uh, code names and structures uh, to our scientists, and it's relatively quickly to curate out from the good papers, bioactivity, disease, affiliation, PubChem, CID, or the novel SMILES, molecular mechanism and disease indication and pattern mappings. So at the moment, our data is months ahead of other sources if, if, uh, on Jane MedChem. We do intend to make the results open to be subsumed into other public databases. The large scale extraction is very good for portfolio mapping. Like I can get all, roughly all, all, uh, all 200 odd AZD compounds uh, that they've got on the outside. Right. So, uh, given the scale limitations of curation, we're exploring automation of relationship extraction and contextual recognition, maybe of even these simple compound numbers. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you.